Having returned to Ocean Fox after the winter break, our plan was to make our way back to Europe, taking in the north coast of Cuba, the Bahamas, Florida, before heading to Bermuda, onto the Azores and the Portuguese mainland. But things rarely go according to plan. We never made it to Florida or the north coast of Cuba. We rejoin our story in the Azores. Our plan was to visit the islands of Pico, San Jorge, Tessera and San Miguel before setting off on the 800 nautical mile crossing to the Portuguese mainland. These islands have so much to offer the visitor, from stunning scenery, smoking geysers and volcanic peaks, and hidden away harbours for you to snug up into. Most of the islands are only a day sail apart, but the trip to San Miguel is a stretch at 93 nautical miles, more than daylight can offer. So it's uh, 4.30 in the morning, we just yeah. left um, no idea. to say that. <laughs> it gets so confused with this island, isn't it? Yeah, we did. And uh, yeah, we left, it's pitch black outside, my god. That surprised me actually, I thought it would be a bit of light in the sky at this time in the morning, but um, I mean there used to be when we were coming across from Bermuda. So, uh, but anyway, we're out, we've got sails up and uh, we're trundling along. Just over halfway to San Miguel and uh, it hasn't been a very easy journey really. Um, the wind's been, first of all, was a lot more on the nose than I was expecting. And uh, we landed up motoring for a while and then we had some squalls come through. By the time we got the reefs in we had to take them back out again. So we were up and down, up and down. We've just got one engine running now to help us a lot because it's just slightly too close to the wind to uh, make the line. So and it's been very choppy so uh, yeah it's not, it uh, hasn't been too pleasant. We've got about 42 miles left to run down to the point. So we'll be there just before dark. Here's Carla taking up her normal position. Yes, my normal state of uh, uh, seasick. That's good. Again? The sea is too bumpy. The second half of the journey has been a bit better actually, the uh, sea state calmed down and the wind did stay up and um, we were actually making very good progress. Uh, we're only doing five and a half knots at the moment but we were up around seven, seven, eight and uh, we pulled up a bit of time actually so uh, we should be in before dark, that's the most important. minutes we anticipated really but that's not bad considering uh, we did that much with the tires we had this week so yeah all in all we're quite pleased and we're going to be in uh, before dark. San Miguel is probably the most beautiful of the nine islands that make up the Azores. From its flower-lined roads, lakes, waterfalls and vistas, it is a paradise in the Atlantic. The, the blue and the green together is yeah. amazing. amazing. But before long, it was time to head back to sea. The final leg of our passage was 804 nautical miles. We had decided to make landfall at Vienna de Costello in the north, Carla's hometown. Then we would coast hop down to Villamora on the Algarve coast, where we departed from 
some two years ago. Okay, so we left about an hour ago. Yep. And uh, the sea's flat, which is a novelty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. It's not flat, flat. No, but but yeah, it's, it's okay, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, for now. We have but we're motoring. Yeah, we're motoring. We don't have any wind yet. No, uh, we have to get around the end of the island and then yeah. turn for the way, waypoint. And yeah. We should get some, uh, we should get the wind off the bow by then and we'd be able to sail. Just. <laughs> just on the, we're just on the wind, right on the wind at the moment. So we're just going to leave the mainsail up. As soon as we get around the end of the island, we can bear away and hopefully we can put the code zero out. So Simon, Simon thinks he saw some whales. Uh, I get very stressed about whales uh, because we heard of some people that sunk the boat when they arrived in water because of the whale. They hit the whales. So that's the first night gone. Uh, well, we, we couldn't ask for a smoother ride, really. It's been uh, really flat to see. Um, so I have been eating. I have. I haven't been seasick, which is good. I think even if the sea gets uh, bumpy now, I'll be fine. At least I think so. Um, but we had a very calm night, uh, the wind dropped completely, so we had the um, engine on, one engine on all night. But now we are sailing beautifully, and yesterday we sailed beautifully too. So it's very, very light, the wind's about 12 knots, but now we're doing about 6 knots, which is good. We have the code zero up, main sail up and the code zero up. This is uh, morning of day three, so we've done uh, basically 48 hours since we left. And it hasn't gone too badly, it's been a little bit light, but uh, it's been a really smooth sail, which has been absolutely fantastic because the car has been so. And uh, pretty well most of the way, we've had uh, the main sail either on the port side and the go zero on the starboard or the other way around. We've actually just done a jive. And uh, yeah, it's just good, it's just good sailing. And uh, we're going to have this for another 24 hours. Uh, then we have a front coming through, but a very light front, um, so that shouldn't give us too much of a problem. Uh, then after that we'll probably have a day of motoring before we get into the final glass. So we're doing not too badly, we're not quite halfway, but we will be short. So today is uh, day three on our journey. <coughs> Simon is So far, we have flat seas, so they're not flat, but uh, they are nearly flat. And the uh, waves are from behind, so we can't really feel anything. Uh, we don't have a lot of wind, uh, but we have enough. It's, uh, Simon would like to have a bit more wind, but I feel, I feel it's good. It's so comfortable, so comfortable. We're not feeling like um, we are in a shaking inside, so the whole boat is just calm. So you don't get stressed or tired. It's much better.
We actually had a cracking day today. We were uh, turning in over seven knots an hour and um, it wasn't too bumpy. Uh, it was pretty good actually and we, we caught up a bit of time, about an hour and a half. Um, we currently have 339 miles to go and uh, I think we're going to arrive somewhere between 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock on uh, Sunday. Um, it's okay, it's okay. I think we're both glad it's coming to an end. Uh, we've got two more nights and that's it. And uh, it's been a long way across the Atlantic uh, this time. And quite disjointed because of the long stops we've had. So I think we'll be pleased. I've just been watching uh, Abandoned at Sea about uh, a tram wreck that capsized off New Zealand when they were adrift. And she's really good watching videos. <laughs> That's all for Tunde. <laughs> you know, you're out here and you, you watch a video. But uh, it is a lot of time to uh, use it. So today is Friday and we should arrive on Sunday, Sunday morning. Uh, lunch time, probably. So, yeah, it's good. We are nearly there. So we're just getting to the uh, end of the Atlantic crossing. Uh, this section has taken us uh, just over six days and at present if I check here we have uh, 84 miles to go to uh, Vienna del Castello in uh, northern part of Portugal just before the Spanish port actually. And uh, we've just gone into the um, trade winds which is this area of red here. They're actually not blowing as uh, hard as they could be. If I don't know where you can see it, we have a small white dot just there. So we're just entering the main band of the, uh, the, the trade winds coming down from the north, the Portuguese trade winds. It's going to take us about eight hours to get across here, and then the wind's going to die off gradually until we're going to be motoring into the last uh, section. 
It's been a bit choppy the last few hours. Um, I think uh, as we were getting close to the train we felt the sea was getting messed around a little bit. And uh, it was actually been quite uncomfortable. Um, we're also starting to see quite a few ships uh, coming up and down the Portuguese coast in the offshore shipping lanes here. Um, this one's called the Tomahawk, that's going to Las Palmas. And this was actually going up to Norway. Um, so it's uh, starting to get a little bit busy actually all around. But uh, we should be in, it's currently uh, just after 10 o'clock at night. And uh, we should be arriving probably before midday tomorrow. So uh, yeah, we've got about 14 hours to run. Dawn came for the last time, so did the fog. It would keep us company all the way into the marina at Vienna. Our journey across the Atlantic was over. We had sailed over 5,800 nautical miles. It would be another four weeks before we sailed into Villamora on the Algarve coast, two years almost to the day from when we had departed. We had completed an extended Great Atlantic Circle, over 22,000 nautical miles and 40 countries, but our adventure is not over. <laughs>